from when I knew what a past life. Let's see what happens. Hey, buddy. How you doing? All right. How you doing? Um, I'm alive. <laughs> I think I might see you on the escalator, but I'm alive, bro. <laughs> well, the escalator's good, man, as long as it crosses the Purple River. There you go. Well, <laughs> I, I don't know where it's going, but uh, I, I'm, I'm going to race you at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to the best. Best gig you ever been to, man. That's what's on the other side of that river. I fucking hope so. You know, uh, uh, when I went to Jerry Garcia's memorial, the band made the mistake of inviting me and Dylan. <laughs> and uh, uh, I say the mistake because there was this pregnant pause where people didn't know what to say. Yeah. And I said, I said, well, at least he's playing with a better band. <laughs> And the only other person to laugh besides me was Dylan, who never laughs at anything. Yeah, he was he notorious. <laughs> he was rolling on the ground because the timing was so perfect. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's, that's cool. That's when, that's when Phil uh, invited me to leave. <laughs> but, Jerry, but Dylan left with me. <laughs> hey, well, there you go. That, that's how you make an exit, dude. <laughs> Dylan walks out the door with you. <laughs> <laughs> I still had my head on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So happy New Year! Yeah, twenty two is a good year. <laughs> well, we'll see. Yeah. Well, we got it's an even year why, because because uh, two you know, <laughs> Earth is made up of dualities, right? I yeah. Mean, man and woman, night and day, black and white. I mean, you know, two, two, two all over the place. Yeah. So I think that that's like about relationships. Relationships. We're in twos and twos, right? So it's yeah. like a reflection. Yeah, yeah. Like right? this. <laughs> yeah, the, sim the symbolism is undeniable. Well. Yeah, yeah. But that doesn't, that by itself doesn't mean 2022 20, is going to be a good year. It could also be the year that, you know, we have a civil war and a world war at the same time, which is more likely than, you know, because duality exists, this is going to be a good year. Because I don't know, man. It's not looking good. <laughs> no, it isn't. And I think that's exactly why we're going to have an inter a intervention. Ooh. Ooh, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Did you, ever, did, did you ever see that film that was made in, I think, the late 50s called uh, with The Day the Earth Stood Still? I, I know of it, but I've never watched it. I've never watched either uh, version. It was one of those movies that was way ahead of its time. Oh, cool. Yeah, this guy comes down uh, in a spaceship, and he's got this giant robot that kind of brings him back to life when the, when the Earthlings kill him because they, they're suspicious of him. Yeah, of course. He brings him back in the ship, brings him back to life, and he comes out and says, you shouldn't have done that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, wow. And, and then everyone's going, oh, shit. I mean, they have the power over life and death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he, he, he says, I want to meet with the world leaders and tell you, we've had enough. We've had enough of your experiment. And uh, we want to meet with the world leaders. <laughs> and, of course, you know, there's the usual bullshit that's around all that with the earthlings, you know. And, and they Fucking say, earthlings. I'm going to have to show you. I'm going to have to show you just how powerful I am. He says, I'm going to make you miss 24 hours of your life. So the next day, everybody was frozen in time, literally frozen in time for 24 hours. And when they came to from that, they realized, oh, shit, we're talking about omnipotent force. <laughs> yeah. We better listen. They were aware? Like, were they just like frozen and they couldn't move? They, they, they couldn't move for 24 hours. They were just frozen in time at, at midday or something like that. But they were aware, so they were, like, trapped. They were just, like... They were, yeah, they were trapped oh. in their bodies. They couldn't move for 24 hours. Holy shit. They were fully conscious, right? Yeah, because blacked out, wouldn't it would be... I mean, you'd be 
groggy, but you'd be okay. But if you're fully conscious, that's a long fucking time to be stuck in that move. Wow. Yeah. You know? So, in a sense, I, I really believe that, um, and now call me crazy if you want, but that I think that... It's a compliment. Uh, I think that, yeah, well, sure, man. It <laughs> is. I'm at least near more. <laughs> I like that. Nirmal, I'm going to use Not that. Normal, that's, but normal. that's good. That's good. <laughs> Nirmal, but I, I like believe, it. I believe, I believe that, you know, <laughs> it's going to come to a point where there has to be an intervention. Because if you think of, if you think of Earth as one of a, a multitudes of experiments, and it's failing because human beings have been put on this planet to spoil it, to be, be parasites yeah. on it. Yeah. And, so it is, if you look at it in a very impartial scientific way, it's a failing experiment. It's failing because of us. Yeah. There was a series on a couple of years ago called uh, uh, Life Without Man. Did you ever yeah, I, th- I saw a couple episodes of that. That was... Wow. Wow, indeed, wow. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if we weren't here, par- if we weren't here, it would become paradise within a couple of years. <laughs> Pretty quick. But here, I got a theory though. I think if if what Graham Hancock and the the other and the scientists that he's been, you know, listening to, are right, and there was a civilization twelve thousand years ago that was wiped out in a flood when when a, a comet hit the ice shelf that was over North America. If all that really happened and there was a big ass civilization that somebody built go black go becky go blacky whatever it is tepe that's 13,000 years old and it's just the biggest fucking thing it, it's this gigantic temple underground so if that's true and then maybe this world fluctuates between the ice age and then this age and maybe they're intent because I've always why are they is it just for money that they are doing extracting the oil and then real quick before we can jump in into be renewable we're going to do natural gas which is cracking up the crust of the earth and releasing methane that's worse they've done worse in the oh we're gonna if just real quick as a gap fuel. Some billionaire who owned a bunch of natural gas came out of Texas and said, we're going to do a gap fuel before we do the wind and solar. And that gap fuel that Hillary Clinton spread around the world when she was Secretary of State. Every country she went to, she's like, here, sign for fracking, please. So what if, instead of just being evil for money, what if they're controlling the jump into the next ice age? If that's being controlled, and if the technology for fusion, right now they're about to crack fusion and make fusion work. Like scientists are like, holy shit, we're getting this, this, and this. We're almost got it. If we go into that next jump hard because they they didn't let it happen naturally and build up, once this global warming melts everything, there's going to be an ice age quick because every all the ocean currents stop. The ne- what happens after global warming is an ice age. And this is going to be the worst global warming, so it's going to be the worst ice age. It's going to hit hard and quick. But if that well, state... Know, Go ahead, yeah. There's a, gla- there's a glacier in the, in, the, uh, in the north of us mm. that's the size of Florida. Mm-hmm. And its foundation is cracking at yeah. the, as we speak. Oh, yeah, they all are. The ones in Antarctica are worse. So it's all going to... Raise that sea level. Now, me and people on boats aren't going to notice much difference. <laughs> no, you you have no idea, man. You are it's it's almost like a water world scenario where you're just you're right. you're set right now because every coastal city on the planet may be underwater in like a matter. It could happen in a matter of days. The way the Thwaites, the the one in, on in on the South Pole, the, the there's one that's holding everything back in. There's water underneath it that's getting warmer, so it's going to crack all at once. If that cracks and everything just flows off Antarctica into the sea at once, dude, a matter of weeks, there's a hundred, hundreds of, there's a billion people underwater in a matter of weeks. And that looks like what's about to happen. I mean, holy fuck, right? Where where the the fuck is Noah when we need him? Well... (laughs) 
but you're on your boat. So you're 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 Noah, dude. Everyone's gonna be their own Noah. Like who? It, it, it's almost preposterous that Noah would be the only one that survived a flood. Like there weren't other boatmen that were like, oh well, it's raining for forty days, but we're good. We're on a boat, right? Why would Noah be the only one that survives? That makes no sense. Well, I'm at a point now where I actually have to sell my boat. Oh, really? Oh, shit. Yeah, things are getting pretty pretty tough on several different fronts here. And uh, mm. um, I'm going to have to move on to dry land, man, which I can't even imagine. Or oh. fathom, for that matter. What, uh, I thought the, in the movie, the movie should hook you up if it's about your life. Well, you would think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Well, what the fuck? You would think so. What? Yeah, the... no, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, God's got a weird sense of humor, Jeff. Yeah. Ain't that the truth? Very weird sense of humor. <laughs> and I always say that if you want to hear God laugh, just tell her your plans. Hmm, there you go. So, you know, I, I'm dealing with the, the twilight time of my life. That's clear. It's in my bones, you know, just yeah. a matter of time. Yeah. Uh, with the exception of leaving my loved ones and family and, and behind, that that hurts. But I'm kind of looking forward to that ultimate trip in a way because it seems like an opportune time to take an exit stage left. Yeah, well, just go out gracefully, so, and it was all it was all part of the dance. That's right, man. That's right. And uh, so I'm 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 in that particular dilemma at the moment, but. Uh, I mean, you know, my friend Jonathan Livingston Siegel comes to see me all the time, and I, he knows what's going on. I swear to God, the guy looks in my eyes, and he's worried, and he knows I'm going to have to leave, and it really breaks his heart, man. Oh, Bur when when I told Audrey's bird, Audrey had a, the, the big white, is it a, a gigantic white, brilliant bird, when Audrey died and we took her body out of the... But she, she'd gone in and out for, for being in treatment, so it was okay for her to be get gone for a few days. But after she died, I went up to the, you know, I always let her out of the cage. I never kept her in a cage. Hated putting her right. in a cage. She lived on top of the cage, and that was her home. But when I told her, like, I looked her in the eye, and I explained, and I did like a, Audrey is, and I did this into the air, and she saw it. I saw her react. I saw her have fucking grief. I saw that bird experience the stages of grief and understand me explain to her that Audrey was... Yes, 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 yeah. Well, this bird follows us all around the marina. Nice. Follows us to the bathrooms, follows us to the, the pier, which is about a mile away. Nice. I mean, you know, I, maybe he'll follow us to where we live on dry land. I don't maybe. know, man, but... But, yeah, that's, you yeah. know, it's it, it's it, I'm kind of in a very sad time because I this boat is my best friend. You know? Yeah. Well, what the fuck? What's going on with the, the movie? I don't understand if there's a movie why you have to go. Uh, well, we're almost we're almost, we're almost finished shooting the movie. <coughs> I imagine it'll come out sometime in the next year and a half. And um, it's already received, you know, a lot of attention, um, you know, even though it's not finished. But uh, my artistic partner and I, my composer friend, Kasha, and I are going to be doing some pantazik, um for the film in the soundstage <laughs> this month. Nice. And that's the, la that's the last thing I have to do. Oh, wow. You know, watch, watch this old man imitate himself when he was 30. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, but it, that's... That, you know, that's the footage, man. That's good footage to... Oh man! Oh, that, the the guy who's directing this is a master editor. He's won lots of awards for editing, and he said he said I'm gonna have a hard time editing this movie because everything's so. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. No, I get that. I'm an editor, man. I, I know his pain right now. Well, just tell him. Just just have him. Just remember, do a do a cut, but then save everything good for the director's cut. And then, you know, 10 years down the road, there's a resurgence and everyone, you know, it's got Merlin shirts on and fucking you live on and, and <laughs> that's yeah, how it works, man. Should, I, a lot of people say I should wait to sell the boat till after the movie comes up because it'll probably sell for more. <laughs> there you go. But uh, it's 
she needs a lot of work. She deserves to be out in the middle of the ocean. Oh, yeah, I get and, it. Yeah, boats, yeah. So I, I just, you know, financially, I just can't handle it anymore. And my hip's getting bad, so it's hard to get on and off the oh, boat. Yeah. And I'm riding around on my scooter. Yeah, I, mean, I have to face the reality sandwich, as bitter as it is. But <laughs> reality sandwich, That's yeah. what's going on, man. Yeah, man, there you go. Yeah, no, I get you it, know. man. The reality sandwich is made of sand. <laughs> 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 and it tastes just a bit of seaweed. Yeah, uh, maybe a little, maybe, maybe a little bit of peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Just a little, a little nutrition in there. <laughs> wow. But listen, man, yeah, I, my friend is sleeping now. I know I'm waking yeah. up with my voice. So All I right, gotta man. go, but I, I, I'll talk to you soon. Man. All right, man. I, I love you, man. Take, have a good, have a good night. I'll give you a call tomorrow if you're gonna be around. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm editing my next three episodes of my my film while I'm snowed in here so I'm just up working so yeah call anytime man all right brother all right take I care love you, man. Good, night. good night love you <laughs> wow I know that guy